Hi everybody, it is Dr. Ron. Uh, you're live on Facebook with me right now. If you're watching this on replay or any other channel, um, if you don't know me, my name is Dr. Cheng Ron. I'm an internal medicine physician and uh, I am the co-creator of the Diabetes Reversal Plan and the co-author of the uh, ultimate guide for uh, type 2 diabetes reversal. So I'm going to jump right into it. How is it that you can reverse diabetes naturally, right? So to understand this, you have to understand how type 2 diabetes works, what it really is, and uh, what we can do about it, right? So diabetes um, literally means sugar in the urine in Greek. That's where the name comes from. Um, but it's got far more to do with sugar. Diabetes is um, a, a spectrum disease. And what it is, is that as you consume food into your body, food breaks down into different components. And these components turn into different things. So carbohydrates and sugars, for example, turns into blood sugar. Fats turn into fats for the body. And the uh, proteins can turn into proteins for the body, or some of the proteins can be degraded into blood sugar itself as well. The system is relatively complex, but this is broken down in a very simplistic level, right? So as you eat something, it turns into something in your body, and there's, this, there's a direct cause and effect relationship. So as you consume a lot of sugars and carbohydrates into your body, these carbohydrates will uh, be broken down and get absorbed as blood sugar. And what that blood sugar does, it triggers the insulin uh, to be released from the pancreas. And when the whole job of the insulin, um, to make it very simplistic, is to allow the body, allow the muscles of the body to take up that blood sugar molecule so the muscles can start using that blood sugar. If the muscles don't use that blood sugar, guess what? It gets stored. It gets stored as, as glycogen, which is in the liver, and it gets stored as fat. And over time, you can have a fatty liver, and over time, you can develop what's called insulin resistance. And the degree of insulin resistance, um, depending on where in the spectrum you are, is type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes, and that's just, that's, just, that's just the name that we give for it, okay? So the disease of diabetes is really insulin resistance. What, is that? what does this insulin resistance mean? It means that as you put carbohydrates into your body, you stimulate the release of insulin to allow the muscles to take up the blood sugar molecules. Well, the problem is, as the muscles in your body gets kind of fatty, your liver gets fatty, your, your body doesn't like it. You're like, what is all this blood sugar doing in here? I don't need it. I'm not burning it off. Okay, so the muscles kind of close this door onto the insulin that the pancreas produces. Well, the pancreas is like, well, crap, there's all this blood sugar coming into the body. All this blood sugar is coming in, and you don't want to take it up, Mr. Muscle, but I don't have a choice but to keep secreting insulin to try to accommodate for the blood sugar coming in. And the muscle's like, I'm sorry, the door is closed, I am fatty enough as it is. So that's, ca that's called insulin resistance. So as the body becomes more and more insulin resistance, it turns into a something called prediabetes and di type 2 diabetes, okay? This is very different from type 1 diabetes, where you have the opposite problem, is where the pancreas are, is not able to produce enough insulin, whereas most people with type 2 diabetes in the very beginning, they have tons of insulin floating around, but the muscles in the body do not accept it, because it's getting just too fatty. And that leads to something called metabolic syndrome. And what well, metabolic syndrome is, is that uh, it's associated with prediabetes, di uh, type two diabetes, it's associated with obesity, and the body really doesn't like that, okay? So now you understand the concept of what type two diabetes is. Well, let's talk about how we can reverse this process, right? And if I told you earlier that as you eat carbohydrates, it stimulates the pancreas to release insulin and so the muscle becomes really resistant. Well, you can do two things. You can attempt to decrease the amount of insulin that the pancreas produces by eating less uh, sugars and eating less uh, starches and carbohydrates. Or you can use all that blood sugar, right, and in, in the form of exercise, all right? But in what I found, especially in my plan, is that it all starts with food. It always starts with food, and I'll tell you why in a second. So we're able to decrease the amount of carbohydrates coming into the body, and there's less insulin floating around, the muscles become more sensitive to the insulin that the pancreas produces. If there's less insulin coming around, 
then the, the, then the liver will start depleting its stores of glycogen. Glycogen is basically uh, carbohydrates that's stored in the liver. And as the liver depletes its stores of glycogen, you start burning fat. And you start burning fat in muscle, actually. And you start burning fat in protein. And so a, a, a lot of people like to call this the ketogenic stage, which is actually a misnomer. Um, but it, we don't really become ketogenic uh, immediately. It takes a lot and takes a, a kidney impairment to do it. But um, that's where the ketogenic diet really comes from. So as we decrease the amount of carbohydrates coming in, and now we're burning fats and we're burning proteins instead of, of uh, uh, burning all these carbohydrates, the glucagon level goes up. Glucagon is that hormone that's the opposite of insulin. It makes your liver produce more sugar. And the, as the liver continues to deplete the supply, guess what? Your fat burning mechanism is on full scale. So when people eat a specific type of diet that allows this to happen, they lose a lot of fat. They lose a lot of weight very quickly. They, not only do they lose fat weight, but they also lose water weight. Now, why do people lose water weight? You ever know of any on a, um, any, know anybody who went on a uh, really low carb diet and they lost a ton of weight really quickly? Well, a lot of it is water weight. It's because the liver is now ch churning out all this, all this glucose, all this sugar by depleting its glycogen stores. So the liver will shrink to like half its size in like a week. And so, and the liver is a big organ. So as you deplete your body of glycogen, you lose that water weight initially, but after water weight comes the fat weight. You start losing fat. Make sense? Okay, so how are we able to eat in a way where we can make this happen? We can start burning the fat in our body and therefore reversing the disease of type 2 diabetes by decreasing the insulin resistance. How are we able to do that? And we're able to do that by reorganizing and recategorizing the way that we eat. So how do we recategorize? And so the categories are really well documented in my eating plan that I have that's um, with this post uh, on my website, that's with this post. And these categories, and I'll tell you what they are. Um, there is the, a vegetable category, there's a protein category, and there's a fat category. And these are like the foundation of what we're supposed to eat. Okay, and consider the food pyramid back in the 1980s, right? The food pyramid had a foundation of being wheat and, and, and bread and carbs of six to 11 servings. Well, that's not really true for someone who wants to lose fat, who's someone who wants to be healthier. No, the foundation should be vegetables. The foundation should be fat. The foundation should be protein. And on the top of the food pyramid, it should be these, these grain-based uh, carbohydrates, right? And so, um, if you don't believe me, look this up. This is, uh, this is very true. This is well documented in a lot of different studies. And if you want to know what the studies are, I actually wrote a book um, called The Ultimate uh, Guide for Type 2 Diabetes Reversal that's also uh, going to be accessible uh, in this link. And it tells you all the studies that we've used to really come together to form this food plan. So I told you the first three categories are vegetables, proteins, and fats. And the last three categories are a combination of different glycemic index-based carbohydrates. So what is a glycemic index? Glycemic index is very basically how much carbohydrates and how fast carbohydrate is released in a specific food. And so we use this information to figure out how fast the blood sugar is released and how much blood sugar will be released over a certain time. And so the, the recategorization of food is not really only good for for diabetics and pre-diabetics. The recategorization of food is really for those people who have metabolic syndrome, who are obese, who want to lose fat, right? And but here is one thing that people never considered when they start a diet, and that one thing is human nature. Okay, so what what is a diet by definition? A diet is some short-term eating plan that people go on and then they get off of it later on and that's what you, a diet usually is right but you, the, that kind of defeats the purpose of how you're supposed to change your lifestyle and my philosophy is if you can't change something for good then why change it at all and so the the people who who start diets they have a short-term goal my short-term goal is to lose x amount of weight in 21 days i don't know why people love 21 days that's a number that's thrown around right 
I'm gonna lose an X amount of weight in 21 days. But how are you gonna keep it off? And most people have a hard time keeping it off. Why? Because most people do the number one thing, number one, number one mistake that most people do is calorie restrict, right? People try to lose weight and lose fat by calorie restriction. It only works temporarily, but over time, it decreases their metabolism. So why is that? When people calorie restrict, what happens is they get pissed off. They get hungry throughout the day and they start making bad choices. And I have patients come into me like, Doc, my sugars are sky high, even though I didn't eat anything for, for the last 24 hours. I was like, well, what did you actually eat? It's like, I had a couple of peanuts and half a donut, but that's it throughout the entire day. I was like, well, well but you had half a donut. He's like, but doc, that's all I had for the entire day. Well, here's the problem. The problem is that starvation sends a signal to the hormones of the body to release some stress hormone when someone is under stress, which is cortisol hormone. And that cortisol hormone will elevate the blood sugar by cranking it out through the liver. And that's why people get higher blood sugars when they're stressed and they're not eating enough and they get really pissed off and then they make really bad decisions for themselves. The other factor is that this guy ate half a donut. Even though he ate half a donut over the last 24 hours, his blood sugar is still high because you have all that stress hormone coming out. And not only that, the body doesn't have protein to digest. The body doesn't have enough fat to digest. The body doesn't have the phytonutrients that exist in vegetables to help the pancreas function. And so most people who are obese, and most people who are fatter are nutrient deficient, right? And they're nutrient deficient is because they don't get enough of these antioxidants, these phytochemicals into their body. So what is the solution? The solution is if you're calorie restricting and trying to lose weight, and if you're type two diabetic or if you're pre-diabetic, you're doing it wrong. You do not want to calorie restrict, instead, you want to make sure that you eat enough phytonutrients from plant-based foods and enough proteins from meat and fish and eggs and beans and enough fats uh, from avocados and olive oil, raw olive oil, never cook olive oil, by the way, raw olive oil. And, and, and these are the things that help support the body. And these are things that people should eat first before going to eat other things, right? And so, in my eating plan that I have on the, with the link that's with this video, it takes into account all of that. So in the first three sections, you have the vegetables, you have the meats and proteins, and you have the fats, and they're un unlimited portions because you should not calorie restrict. In fact, there's minimums that people should eat for those, and those are documented in the plan. And then the last three sections where all the, the carbohydrates are, those should be limited. And so I always say that humans have a really hard time restricting. From the time that humans wake up to the time that humans go to sleep, all we do is seek reward. <laughs> every, every second of the day, we seek reward, right? And when we restrict something, when we have a restrictive mentality like going on a diet, it can never work permanently because that's not how we're made. So instead of a restrictive eating plan, let's make it an unrestricted eating plan and eat as much as the, uh, uh, as much as the food that we want of a specific plan. The old idea of calories in and calories out of permanent fat loss, that does not work, okay? It works in the short term, but over time, the body, if you calorie restrict long enough, the body's metabolism will slow down. The amount of calories that the muscles will burn, and not only that, the actual muscle mass will decrease so that when people get off their diet, they become even fatter. And this is seen in the show, The Biggest Loser. The Biggest Loser, a lot of these people on The Biggest Loser, they lose a tremendous amount of weight, but even though they're still calorie restricted, but not as much after the show, they tend to gain a lot of weight back. And they gain a lot of weight back because they're, they're, they're nutrient deficient and their metabolism has slowed down with the calorie restriction. So it's a whole spectrum of different things on how to reverse diabetes. But um, I'll try to break it down very simply. If you want to know how to reverse type 2 diabetes and diabetes, um, download the plan. It's free, by the way. Click on the link, enter your, your name, enter your email. It's completely free. It, the plan takes into account recategorization of food, human nature, and the fact that there's no calorie counting or carb counting in this plan because simply we cannot 
we cannot do uh, have a restrictive mentality for the rest of our lives. And the idea behind eating, the idea behind eating is that you want to do it in a way where it's permanent. Then this is how you do it, right? And so, thank you for listening. But I'm going to take some questions. Uh, Georgia, Georgia Garcia, is it Benavides? I hope I pronounced it right. Reverse psychology. Reverse psychology is um, this is this is a little different from reverse psychology, and uh, we're going with human nature, right? Um, I think the idea of that humans don't like to restrict um, is, is you know we we all understand what that means, and uh, if we restrict, we have a hard time keeping up with that restriction for the rest of our lives. So that's why most people fail on diets, and that's why most people kind of go yo-yo up and down in their weight and on diets, right? Uh, Gabriel Garcia. How bad is it to drink beer if you're pre-diabetes? It's actually very bad. Uh, alcohol does a lot to your body that you don't realize. There's actually six different mechanisms that alcohol alone makes you fatter. Alcohol is also damaging to the liver. It causes fatty liver disease. Um, it, makes, it makes the liver less functional. So in both men and women, it's, um, it, de it decreases the degradation of estrogen. Estrogen builds up in both men and women. That's why when a lot of men get fatter, they have man boobs because of the estrogen effect, not necessarily because it's just fat. Right? So alcohol itself is actually very, very bad for prediabetes, diabetes, because it leads to a lot of metabolic syndrome. Okay. Uh, Deborah, how do I, Deborah Whitaker Blevins, how do I reverse my diabetes? That's what I've been talking about the entire time. Um, Tammy, my daughter was recently diagnosed. It was the first of the year and her blood sugar has been all over the place, mostly high. We tried a couple of things that have shown promise, but she ran out of money trying a natural approach and is going and goes back to insulin and now a pill is added. Tammy, let me tell you something. Um, I don't know how old your daughter is, but I assume she's a type two diabetic. If she's the type one, then ignore what I'm gonna say. Uh, type two diabetics um, actually should not be on insulin. If you think about it earlier, I said that type 2 diabetics, um, when they eat food, the body releases insulin and the body becomes more insulin resistant. So if you're injecting more insulin to your body, you're just worsening the disease of type 2 diabetes. Right? And so um, as far as insulin goes, I do not think that type 2 diabetics should be on insulin. I think it should be a, a, um, an eating approach uh, and oral medications if it's, if it's really bad. Okay. Um, and you say that she feels worse on insulin. Well, why do people feel worse on insulin? Insulin causes people to, uh, to gain weight because if you inject too much insulin, your blood sugar can, can go low at different times, which is actually very dangerous for you. And every time the blood sugar goes low, um, you tend to all of a sudden crave sweets. And you tend to all of a sudden eat all these different things just to keep up with the blood sugar. Um, but their um, blood sugar going too low is actually a lot worse than, than just a little bit of elevated blood sugar. So that's why she feels worse on insulin, insulin most likely, but I would defer to her physician to make that assessment because I have not seen her. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of comments. Thank you guys for commenting. Uh, Miss Wilkerson, Augusta, Georgia. I've been, I was there a couple years ago. It's a beautiful place. Uh, Magdalena Luna, is it possible for somebody with diabetes to get pregnant? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is possible. But for those people who are diabetic, I really suggest uh, reversing the disease and eating really right and eating clean before uh, electing to get pregnant. Um, so, so if you plan on getting pregnant, really try to, to control that blood sugar because the blood sugar is damaging for the fetus. Um, it can cause a lot of different issues, neurological issues. It can cause a really, uh, it can cause you to have a large baby, and that has that can be troublesome, especially when trying to do a vaginal birth, and if you and uh, avoid a C-section. So, um, what is the name of the site to download? Uh, it's actually in the description of this video. So if you go into the description, but it's uh, it's my last name. It's ronmd.com. It's r-u-a-n-m-d.com slash diabetes um, best food to eat for reversal Kevin um, I completely listed all the foods for diabetes reversal in my eating plan it's free for download um, you can go ahead and download it you just have to click on the link that's in the description and then it goes to uh, my, my my website and you'll see the free plan once you hit that you enter your name and email 
you confirm that you're a real person, it's a real email, and it'll be sent to you. All right. Um, Georgia Garcia, what about vitamin intake, especially uh, vitamin candy form? Um, so there's a lot of vitamin. First of all, vitamins are made differently. A lot of multivitamins are not really well absorbed by the body because um, multivitamins by definition have a lot of vitamins in it. Each vitamin is absorbed in a different part of the gut and if the outer coating of the vitamin um, is absorbed at um, the lower part of the gut and the inner part of the vitamin is absorbed in the, in the upper part of the gut, um, since it's coated in a reverse way, it may not make it all the way down. And so liquid vitamins are actually better in that regards, but, but vitamins uh, do help um, with uh, type 2 diabetes reversal. Most people who are type 2 di diabetics or pre-diabetics have some sort of magnesium deficiency. Uh, magnesium glycinate is the one I actually recommend for people. Um, but that's a different subject and I could talk all night about that. Uh, Tamara or Tamara, I don't know which one it is, a real curt night. I also have a heart condition. Can I still use your plan? Uh, check with your doctor first, okay? Most heart conditions, yeah. But I don't know exactly what that heart condition is, but check with the uh, doctor, check with the cardiologist before starting on this plan. And to download the plan, you know, put it on your iPad, put it on your iPhone or something and, and just show it to them exactly what it is. And, uh, but generally it's, it, it's pretty safe, but do, also, but do check with your doctor. Christy McDonald uh, and Antonakos. Is that Greek? Christy, are you Greek? <laughs> Uh, what about high protein, low sugar shakes? Um, yeah, that's um, that's actually fine. It really depends on the shake. It really depends on the quality of the protein. It depends on what exactly they use as a sugar substitute. Sometimes sugar substitute can be worse than actual sugar because of how addictive they are. Because they're thousands of times more uh, sweet than actual sugar alone. Uh, you guys have some really good questions. Uh, do, 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 do. Having a lot of fatigue, do you think it'd be diabetic related? Um, fatigue. Fatigue and diabetes go hand in hand. Uh, fatigue, when something's wrong with your body, you're, all, you're gonna be tired. When something is wrong with your body, you're gonna feel fatigued. And, um, and the worse it is, the more fatigue that you get. And that has to do with a multitude of things in people who are diabetic. Uh, it has to do with the estrogen levels being higher, it has to do with the cortisol hormones being higher, it has to do with stress, it has to do with poor sleep. Um, has to do with uh, the higher the blood sugar goes, the more depressed and anxious somebody is, and that can cause them to fatigue. It's a lot of different factors, but you know it definitely could be related. Um, it's Hilliard. Navaga, Navaga is a Navaga angel. I'm on insulin and pills. Seems that we didn't eat carbs, it would go away. Okay, so it's not just uh, carbs. So for, first of all, all vegetables are carbohydrates. All right, well, let's, let's get that straight. All vegetables are carbohydrates. The reason why vegetables don't affect the blood sugar as much is that these vegetables have a lot of fiber in them, right? And these, this fiber is, helps you digest and actually decreases overall blood sugar and cardiovascular risk. Now, having said that, let's talk about grains. Grains are a carbohydrate, right? Grains in the terms of wheat, rye, barley, gluten, stuff like that. These things, they're carbohydrates, and even though some of them have fiber, the grains itself may cause a lot of inflammation in the body, and that inflammation can worsen type 2 diabetes, increase insulin level, makes you tired, and not do well for yourself. Um, if you're on insulin and you're on pills, understand that uh, pills like sulfonylureas, like glipizide, glimepiride, these medicines can, can overshoot and make your blood sugar much lower, and therefore causes weight gain. Insulin can also overshoot, can make your uh, blood sugars much lower, it also causes weight gain, and that can be detrimental when you're trying to go on an eating plan. So check with your doctor before you start on this eating plan, all right? Okay. Steven, how do I go started? Go to my website. It's a, the link is uh, with this video. Um, what sort of substitute sweeteners are the best? I don't think any sweeteners are good. <laughs> the most natural one I would have to say is, uh, is stevia. Um, but um, but sugar sub sugar substitute the problem with them they're just so sweet and uh, what it does what people don't realize that sugar substitutes do is that it stimulates your brain into thinking well there's sugar around and then you, and then your hormones get out of whack and you want to increase your metabolism but really there's not enough sugar around and then the body's like oh I'm kind of tricked and then it kind of lowers the metabolism number one number two sugar substitutes are so addictive they're, they're one of the most addictive substances on the face of the earth much more than heroin, cocaine, and morphine, all this stuff like that. 
and so um, they, they can be they can be pretty damaging. Ms. Wilkinson, you're on Traceba and the Foreman. Uh, that's kind of answering the last question. I take. Hello, Connie. How's it going? From Gary, Indiana. Uh, Kathy. Kathy, if you signed up, you don't see an email. Maybe your spam folder. Check out your spam folder, or there may be a delay. Sometimes there's just delay. Uh, Lauren Harding, you're a metformin, a thousand milligrams twice a day. Lauren, that's a high dose. I hope you're not having diarrhea, because uh, that dose generally causes at least some uh, uh, diarrhea issues. Okay. Uh, what about monk fruit? Well, there's a lot of different foods that are that are actually okay. I'm not going to get into the actual uh, types of foods because that's just a very large subject that we're going to deal with. Uh, Betty Turner Wilson. Yesterday I was having a severe numbness, tingling in my foot, and severe head and neck pain. Will this help the neuropathy? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm assuming that this neuropathy is caused by your diabetes. If it's not caused by diabetes, go to your doctor and find this out whether your neuropathy may be caused by the diabetes. People who have diabetic neuropathy do gain a lot of their function back and have significantly less neuropathy once they're able to eat right, once they, they're able to get their hemoglobin A1C down, which is the average blood sugar over three months. Once that number comes down and that process is reversed, people get a lot of relief from, from neuropathy. But neuropathy is caused by a lot of different things, Betty, a lot of different things. Check with your doctor and make sure that you know what your neuropathy is caused by because that's a very important thing, okay? Nice. Thanks for tuning in. There's a lot of people live on here and uh, I have to go, but uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate everybody, everybody's um, input. Um, and, uh, you know, go ahead and download my plan, check it out and uh, see how it is for yourself. I use this plan in my own practice. It's helped, you know, we have uh, a little over 600 people on it right now. And, uh, and they do tremendously well. If you click on the link, it will show some of the results that we've had in my practice. All right? Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it.